It was one of those moments. Game on the line. Play at the plate. An enormous out. And then it wasn't. A swirl of controversy, a fit of rage, and a bitter loss. Tonight, the Marlins try to turn the page. Jared Kozart gets the ball with the fish in need of a feel-good moment. Marlins Park, baseball to be played tonight. The Reds and the Marlins. They say when you come to a ball game, you may see something you've never seen before. I think everybody that was here last night would say that was one of those nights. Hi, everybody. Rich walks along with Tommy Hutton. We've heard turn the page a lot today. Tommy, that's easier said than done. You played the game. You've gone through tough losses. Yeah, if uh, if ever there were people who could turn the page, it's baseball players because we talk about it all the time. 162 games. You're out there day in and day out. You have a bad game. You have to turn the page and get ready for a good game. So if anybody can do it, it's a group of ball players, and hopefully the Marlins can. Sometimes a play like last night can really bond a team together. All right, perspective, and to bring it full circle, here's the play. You've seen it many times. Fly ball to the right. Stanton on court's a great throw. Well, again, I, I will just say what I saw. It was a perfect throw. Jeff Mathis looked at his feet. Then he had to go get the ball. Giancarlo made a good charge. And everything was done properly. That's what was very frustrating because you do everything right and then you don't get the call. I guess what they're trying to say is Mathis has to leave home plate, go get the throw, and then try to sweep tag the runner. But if he has the ball, he can block the plate. And Mike Remen, obviously a major league catcher, upset. Major League Baseball issued a statement. This didn't make the Marlins feel any better. And the statement was the replay official judged the catcher did not provide a lane to the runner and hindered his path without possession of the ball. The throw also did not force the catcher into the runner's pathway as a result in accordance to 713. The ruling on the field was overturned and the run was allowed to score. The bottom line where I disagree is that he did have the ball when he entered the path. Okay, the news didn't get any better for the Marlins when they arrived here at the ballpark. They found out that their ace, their second ace, is on the disabled list with right shoulder inflammation, Henderson Alvarez. It makes the trade with Houston look really good, and you hope that Jared Cozart could come through with a big game tonight. Cozart walks in here amid all the controversy, gets the baseball, and they say, go get him, kid. We'll meet the kid when we return.
infielder, outfielder, Kike Hernandez. Fish saw him in Houston last week as well. For more on that trade, out to center field, Craig and Niner. All right, thank you very much, uh, Rich. And a quick flight in and right to work for the newest Marlin. You mentioned Hernandez. You got Jared Cozart getting the start here. And ironically, the Marlins faced him in his last start. No rest for the weary. I mean, when you make a trade in, in Major League Baseball, you're considered to get on the plane and get to your new team and get started. And there it is tonight. Jared Cozart gets a start for the fish. Uh, Kike Hernandez, you see, as well. Traded for Jake Marisnik and Colin Moran, number one pick from last year. Jake Marisnik, one of that big uh, pieces in the Toronto trade from a couple years ago, along with a couple other pieces. So hopefully Jared Cozart can step on the mound and take over for, for the injured Henderson Alvarez, who went on the DL today. Well, the Marlins hit him pretty good there. As you see, Cozart has finished his warm-ups, now getting ready for the start. What about this whole move for him in the last 24 hours is that easy to deal with or or is he back to home because he goes on the mound immediately yeah I think he's back on the mound uh, this is what he does best in between the lines is, is on that bump out there so I think uh, this whole trade stuff is behind him and he's ready and eager to pitch for the Marlins All right, a lot going on for him almost like the Marlins here what happened last night and then you got the local product Matt Latos one of the real great guys to talk to around the game is Latos against the Marlins yet to beat him his ball club has won three of those seven starts has not pitched very well the last couple starts out either giving up seven earned runs so hopefully the Marlins can capitalize on that and get a much needed victory all right the pitchers are ready the teams are set and we are too for game two of the series what is in store in this one after the excitement of last night we'll look for you in the post game everybody enjoy it Fox Sports Florida by Toyota. Let's go places by AT&T Uverse TV. Find out what's possible with AT&T. 1-800 pick AT&T. Mobilizing your world by Checkers. Checkers brings big flavor for a small price. Feed your craving for quality for only a buck. Cha-ching. And by your South Florida Honda dealers and SFHondaDealers.com Jared Cozart, all of 24 Got to the big leagues with the Houston Astros. The Marlins faced him and beat him six days ago. Pinch of Penny's first pitch is Cozart's first pitch is a fish and it's outside. Cozart out of League City, Texas. This is start number 21 on the season. He zips one in for a strike to speedy Billy Hamilton. Jay Bruce, Todd Frazier, and if anybody reaches, Devin Mezzarocco. For a Reds lineup that's gotten a lot better than it was last night with the addition of Bruce and Mezzarocco 
And Hamilton, with all that speed, trying to set one down. It's one and two. Probably one of the hardest things for uh, Jared Cozart to do or to try to do tonight is to, to just stay calm and stay in his game. You know, your tendency is to go out there and try to impress your new teammates, impress the new team. And I think if he does that, he'll be fine, and it's a good start to get Hamilton that way. Line up for the Cincinnati Reds with that win last night, 54 and 54. Jam Lexus brings it to you. Hamilton, the leadoff spot. Bruce is back from bereavement list. Frazier hitting third. Mezzarocco, an all star this year. So you add those two bats, it's a little more potent tonight. Brian Ludwig had a big hit last night. Skip Schumacher, a star at third. Christopher Negron is over at third base. And Zach Cozart, no relation to Jared Cozart, is at shortstop for the Reds. And here is Jay Bruce, not having the best of seasons. Uh, certainly a down year from Bruce. And when Votto out, with Phillips out, the Reds are hoping that Bruce snaps back to form. I think it shows a little bit when you have uh, some big boppers uh, around you. It takes a little pressure off you. And with Phillips and Votto in the lineup, Jay Bruce was uh, tremendous the last five, six years, but uh, very, very low numbers this year for him. Brian Price, the skipper of the Reds in his first year. Without his two big offensive pieces in Votto and Phillips has been able to cobble it together with dynamite starting pitching a really good bullpen and an offense that hasn't scored more than three runs in 12 straight games. That one foul back to the screen. If you've just joined us Henderson Alvarez has been placed on the disabled list and maybe since Cozart dresses like Alvarez he'll pitch like it. if you'll notice and when we get a shot of it. He's misbuttoned his jersey top like Alvarez is wont to do. On to second, and Valdespin gobbles it up. Now keep in mind, it's a it's a new jersey. He's getting used to the field, getting used to the fit. He has to look down. He sees Miami. He doesn't see Houston. That top button is just a little bit low, but Alvarez always comes out all askew, and it doesn't seem to hurt him. Here's Frazier now, and it was Frazier who lifted the ill fated fly ball to right last night. Saws him off. Jared Cozart's Miami debut is a 10 pitch first inning. Cozart after the inning. Nate Valdi, who was buddies with Cozart, they both grew up in that Houston area. They've known each other for a while. Valdi giving him dressing tips. <laughs> Cozart says, "Hey, one, two, three inning. That's a good teammate. No worries." Marlins lineup. Two under are the fish. Jam Lexus brings you the lineup. Christian Yelich, a dynamite July. Everybody turning into August today. Jordani Valdez speed at second. John Carlos Stanton is hot all of a sudden. 
Casey McGee at third base, Garrett Jones at first, Marcelo Zuna at center, Jared Saltramaki back behind the plate, Danny Echeverria, and Jerry Cozart was in the American League, still waiting for an at bat this year. He'll get one tonight, and it will come against Matt Latos. Big guy, 6'6, 244, Matt Latos. Uh, we've talked about it, Coconut Creek High School, so he's got friends and family on board here tonight. Came over to the Reds in that big deal that sent Alonso, Grandal, Volquez to the uh, San Diego Padres. Had some injuries this year, though, making just his ninth start of the season. Yelich leads it off, and Latos misses ball one. Latos last start against the Nationals. Lost it. A 4 2 ball game. Gave up three runs. Not had the best of July's. Off his glove and it redirects it. Schumacher has to hurry and it's just in time to get a hustling Christian Yelich. Yeah, sometimes that ball is deflected and it trickles into the outfield. Sometimes it heads right to another infielder. So bad luck that time for Christian Yelich. Latos. A big guy on the mound. He's 6'6, 245. Yeah, he reaches out. He's able to deflect it right there on the money with Skip Schumacher, the second baseman. Broward Community College is where he was when he was drafted as Val Despin takes in. Jordani in game number 13 with the fish. Be interesting to see what happens out at second base. With the arrival of Kike Hernandez, we focus so much on Cozart. Valdespin has played quite well, and he drills that into right field for a hit. One out single to right, and that brings up Stanton. Yeah, once again, the odd man out was Ed Lucas with the arrival of uh, Kike Hernandez. Valdespin yanks one, he just pulls it right through that hole. And there is Kike. Enrique Kike Hernandez. Got to see him play center field at Minute Maid. As Giancarlo Stanton climbs in, and Valdez being dashes back. Stanton in the ball game last night blasted a homer to left, and that looked like it would be enough to do it. That was against Johnny Cueto in the first inning. And he's continued what he stumbled upon. A few days ago, and that is taking batting practice solely in the cages and not coming out and taking it on the field. Jeff Conai talked about the slider machine and how Stanton has been able to use that during his batting practice. Yeah, it's a machine. It throws a, a real hard breaking ball. So Stanton's been working on that in the cage inside near the clubhouse. But it wasn't a slider that he hit last night. Fastball, Cueto tried to sneak a fastball in, and John Carlos said, no, no, 142 home runs as a Marlin. Closing in on Mikey Lowell. Mikey Lowell with 143. That would be third place. Valdez being at first. Stanton against Latos. With one out. Just underway in Miami tonight. And Stan hits a pop up a mile high back behind the plate as a Rocco is there and he makes the catch. That one almost got out of play. Mezzarocco, who did not start in last night's ball game, runs it down. Well, Latos tried to do, do the same thing. He tried to sneak that fastball in. He was much more successful than Cueto was. Casey McGee now. McGee last night. Shot a double down the right field line. One of the forgotten plays in, in everything that happened in the eighth inning was McGee getting thrown out at the plate on the Garrett Jones single in the first, which would have given Miami a, a 2 nothing lead. Not that that would have prevented anything from the uh, unraveling in the eighth, but the Marlins had opportunities to get more against Cueto and did not. Well, in the eighth inning, remember, there was the error. Mike Dunn bobbling the uh, bunt by Hamilton. Valdez being the runner at first. He 
Santos pounds McGee inside. And it's a ball and a strike. Leitos, since getting to the big leagues, has been terrific, really. If you look at his numbers with the Padres, and once he was dealt over here with the Reds. McGee, a soft fly ball to right, and it's falling, and it falls for a hit. Bruce sliding, got a piece of it, and that's it. Valdespeed stops at third. McGee gets a bloop single, and Miami still alive here in the first. At the corners, here comes Garrett Jones. Long way to go. Pretty good effort by Jay Bruce, but the ball just came out of the glove. It looked like he had it, and then once that glove hit the ground, it popped out. So the recipient of that ball popping out is Casey McGee. He gets the base hit. Valdesby moves over to third. And now an opportunity here for Jones. Garrett Jones, a pirate for a long time. And a guy that certainly has seen Matt Latos. In fact, 26 plate appearances, 24 at bats, but just four hits. One of those a home run. It's a 167 average. Of the numbers. That Latos has put up in his career. To me, the most impressive. His record in ERA in Cincinnati at Great American Ballpark 19 and 6 with a 3.11 ERA. Very similar to uh, Johnny Cueto's numbers at home. Jones sends it left center field. Hamilton's got a lot of speed and he runs it down and makes the catch on the track. Miami leaves the pair. This game is underway. And scoreless. In the top of the second. Got their drinks ready to go. Ram brings you Miami's defense tonight. And there it is. Yellow, Jozuna, Stanton in the outfield. McGee, Echeverria, Valdez, Spin, Garrett Jones. No changes. Jared Salton, Lavacchia is back in there behind the plate. Saw Salty in the clubhouse earlier today chatting with Jared Cozart just to. You know, calm him down, go over things, go over the signs, go over the hitters. There's not a whole lot the Marlins can do, whether it's Salta Lamaki. And I even chatted with Chuck Hernandez about Salty's approach and, and his approach in, in dealing with Cozart. 
And Hernandez had a great point. Said the, the, the worst thing you can do is try to change him or or say, hey, you know, I saw your start six days ago when you pitched against the Marlins. Why don't you try this? So you got to get to know a guy. You got to get to understand what makes him tick and just let him go. Liner to left. Yelich. Good jump there and he makes the catch. That's a the good thing about it is that uh, Salty caught that game, so he played against Cozart. He had three ABs against him. He had a little opportunity to see him. Marlins Baseball is presented in Espanol via Zap for Kendall and West Kendall Toyota. Scoreless game. Reds Marlins. Brian Ludwig added. Guess insult and two runs to the injury last night after the play was overturned at home plate. Ludwig had a, a terrific at bat, dropped one into center field, and Cincinnati would stretch that lead to 3 1, held by the bullpen. Jonathan Broxton and a roll this Chapman. McGee cuts off a big hop. Fires to first in time. And Ludwig is out number two. And Jerry Cozart so far, Tommy, pounding the strike zone and getting out. Yeah, and uh, we talked about that. If he's in the strike zone, his stuff is good. Look at that. 15 pitches. 13 of those have been strikes. It's a ball club that's been tough, though, against the Marlins. Uh, the Reds have won six straight against Miami going back to last year. Schumacher now. Skip Schumacher has made a nice living in baseball at being very versatile. Play on the infield. He can play in the outfield. Of course, that made him a perfect St. Louis Cardinal in the Tony La Russa era. He was a world champion with him in 2011. He went to four postseasons. A Dodger last year, he played a lot last year. He appeared in 125 games. He had back to back years in St. Louis in 08 and 09. He hit just a little over 300 each year. 34 year old now, and he's a native of Southern California. Echeverria tracks it and makes the catch. That's a nine pitch in it. Jared Kozar off to a good start. Scoreless game, bottom of the second. And of course, last night's controversy in the eighth inning, everybody weighing in on it. Our Geico quote of the night this was at the end of uh, Brian Price's long 
quote on the play and he finished it by saying I think tonight's play is indicative of why we should probably go back to normal. Can I get an amen on that one. <laughs> I think that to me is indicative that a manager like Brian Price or Mike Redmond uh, pick a manager Freddie Gonzalez. I think managers in, in talking to them in talking to major league catchers even talking to base runners guys that are the ones that are coming around third with plays at the plate. No one is quite sure where the line is what is acceptable and what is not acceptable and Major League Baseball issuing a statement this afternoon in case you missed it as Ozuna stands in that their interpretation of the umpiring crew in New York's interpretation of last night's play was that Jeff Mathis did not give Cozart a lane to the plate and that in their opinion he did not need to go into the line. Here's the official statement. Replay official judge that the catcher did not provide a lane to the runner hindered his path to the plate without possession of the ball. The throw also did not force the catcher into the runner's pathway as a result in accordance with the rule ruling on the field was overturned. Well I respectfully disagree because the throw took Jeff Mathis in that area right where the runner was which by the way was uh, eight or ten feet before the runner got there. A runner cannot deviate his path to make contact with the catcher. That makes a whole lot of sense. But on the other hand a catcher cannot block home plate if he doesn't have the ball. But if he has the ball and the ball takes him there he can. And that's why I do not agree with that statement. Here's why they made the statement. It would have come with more consequences had they overturned it. It would have disrupted a lot of things. They would have had to decide what to do to the game last night. Much easier to make the statement they did. And now I'm turning the page. There you go. <laughs> South of Lavakia is up. Danny Echevarria. Against Matt Latos. Latos gave up a couple of hits, a Valdez being single, a McGee single. We got Garrett Jones that hit a deep fly ball out. And that ended the first. So Telemachia swings and misses. And just like that, Latos has a pair of punch outs here in the second. Let's check in on the scouting report. Kind of a little herk and jerk in the delivery. He jumps at hitters, and when you're 6'6, six, six, it's a it's a little tough to pick up. He's slow, then he jumps, and he's got tight break on that slider. That was the slider he was able to throw to Salty and strike him out on. Echevarria takes a fastball for a strike. Echevarria last night, an 0 for 3. Latos, he's an interesting combination. We see guys who have the, as you put it, herky jerky delivery that are able to throw in the upper 80s or right around 90 and get away with it because the ball is hidden and it kind of jumps at you. Aaron Harang is a, a good example. Well, he's got the herk and the jerk, and he's got a little more velocity than that. He's got the herk and jerk with giddy up. begin the month of August month of July finished 14 and 12 in the month of July and had some ups and downs and quite a bit of excitement and all arounds <laughs> and for the month to end like it did last night maybe it's a good thing that you start a new month tonight trading deadline passed Mike Redman and the Marlins had not made a deal, or at least it seemed. And then news kind of trickled out after the pass of the deadline that the Marlins had indeed made the trade. Obviously, Cozart arriving was nice, but it got even more prominent 
today with the announcement that Henderson Alvarez retroactively was going on the 15 day disabled list from shoulder inflammation. That means Jacob Turner is still in the rotation. This was supposed to be Turner's night to pitch. Looks like uh, Jacob Turner will start when on Sunday. Nathan Evaldi scheduled to pitch tomorrow night. Latos the one two. And Echeverria got jams. Running it down is Schumacher. One, two, three for the big right hander. Right, telecast is presented by the authority of the Miami Marlins may not be reproduced or retransmitted in any form and the accounts and descriptions of this game may not be disseminated without the express written consent of the Miami Marlins. Jared Cozart has looked sharp so far. Needing just 19 pitches to get six outs. Taking a page out of uh, Tom Kohler's book from last night. Tom Kohler 15 pitches in the first two innings. Of course, Cozart, one of many major league players in new uniforms in lineups tonight. You look around the league and box scores tomorrow morning or later on tonight online will look a little different than they did after last night's action. Whether you're in Boston or New York or Oakland or a lot of places around Major League Baseball, there is a full schedule of games tonight. On this Friday night. That one inside on Negron. Chris Negron, kid from Sacramento, has spent a while in the minor leagues, a very good glove man, called upon with the injury to Brandon Phillips. He can play it at second and at third. He's a shortstop by trade. The 2 1. He rolls it out to Echeverria. Gozart has an out here in the third. Got to be 21 and older, but if you are, hey, Beer Fest is for you. And that's tomorrow from 4 to 7 right here at Marlins Park at the Clevelander pregame. Stay and watch the Marlins take on the Reds. Ticket starts just $30. So 30 bucks, you get into Beer Fest, you're drinking beer, and you get to go to the ball game. Now those tickets must be purchased in advance. Go to Marlins.com slash special events. Can I sign up sign up for that, Rich? Sure. You're how old are you? Kid? I'm over 21. You're in. 
Now we have Cozart with a Z against Cozart with an S. Well, they're from different places. Cozart on the mound with an S. It's from League City, Texas. Cozart with a Z at the plate is from Collierville, Tennessee. Cozart with a Z played college ball at Ole Miss. Cozart with an S was going to play college ball at Missouri and then signed after being drafted in the 38th round. I'll tell you what, he's moving his fastball around nicely in and out. Cozart was a, a rookie in the minor leagues his first year. That's line down the left field line, hit well, but foul. Cozart in his first uh, spring training, all the Phillies brass got a chance to look at him. And Brian Price was uh, spending time between organizations. Pat Gillick, who was his GM in Seattle. Hired Price to help the young pitchers. And so Price got to work with Jared Cozart and liked him a lot. They talked about him yesterday. Well, it has to, I, I've always thought, really be interesting for a manager who, like a, like a Buddy Black, guys who were former pitchers and pitching coaches, to, yes, they're keeping track of their guys, but to also check out the other pitcher watch their mechanics watch what they throw. I think it's easier to do now that they're managers rather than pitching coaches. Because a lot of uh, pitching coaches they're just zeroed in on their guys. And they spend a lot of time in that inning when their team is up and that pitcher is on the bench. You know either talking to the catcher talking to the pitcher just making sure everybody's okay. Price was between jobs. He had resigned from the uh, Diamondbacks. This is before the uh, Reds signed him to be their pitching coach. 3 2. Announcer to short and Chavaria. Yeah. On the money, that was close. That Cozart getting down the line quickly. Two outs, and here comes Latos. Toast climbs in. And he takes a rip at it. Now the Marlins had a reliever. He is sadly passed away. Justin Miller, who had tattoos on most of his body and arms as well. And Major League Baseball forced him to wear sleeves when he pitched. They called it the Justin Miller rule. But they've since done away with that. So, for instance, Tommy, you could go with short sleeves now and not have to cover your arms up. Yeah, but we've been, you know, using the long sleeves to kind of hide that over the last few years. Go with one of those John Carlos stamp sleeves, which the the uh, the John Carlos stamp red, white, and blue sleeve can now be purchased. Yes, that's right. In fact, when we get to the bottom of the third, we have uh, visual treats for the kids. Okay. Tommy will show us that sailor tattoo on the left <laughs> forearm. There's a 2 2. Line to right. Ah, good timing. All comes full circle. Stand with the catch, scoreless game.
sleeves. John Carlos Stan, of course, wears a sleeve. And remember, Tommy, when he busted out that patriotic red, white, and blue? Yeah, this is cool. I, I think John Carlos fills it out a little bit, a little bit more than I do. <laughs> now, at the Marlins team store here, they this have is a, cool. I a, like this. A lot of cool things, and those are now on sale. Not only in the red, white, and blue, but also in the black and the orange. The other thing that is cool and on sale now is the Marlin blue jersey. And you can only buy this at the team store. You can't get it online. So here at Marlins Park, you've got the cool blue jersey. That's sweet. Or the sleeve. I could just see you like at a dinner party. Yeah. Captain America Hutton. Very nice. Might help help you hold a drink a little longer. See, and, and that Guns N' Roses tattoo on your forearm doesn't show up. <laughs> How about that? <laughs> All right, back to baseball here. Kozart. He takes a fastball outside. Jerry Cozart, not a lot of ABs. His minor league career, one for 15. Of course, he's played for an American League team. Although he wasn't in an American League organization until last year when they made the, the switch. Off the plate, let's see if he can beat this out. And he does. How about an infield base hit? His first major league hit. So, in his first Marlins start, Jared Cozart gets his first major league hit. They'll throw that ball out of play. He knew it'd be trouble once it got this high in the air. Cozart at short tried to bare hand. He tried everything, but even if it's on time and on the money, it doesn't get. Jared Cozart, so he gets his first major league hit of the infield variety. Mike Redman just came out to talk to the home plate umpire, Andy Fletcher, about what I'm not sure, but all four umpires are in the middle of the diamond right now. It may be that the the question is whether the ball went out of play. Let's see if it hits. And it looked like it hit the railing. Yeah, it hit the green railing. And Rob Leary in the video room confirming that. And that, that probably is the quickest that I've seen Marlins photographer Dennis Bancroft move in a long time. Well, he was getting out of the way. Nice going, Dennis. <laughs> he was really protecting that lens. On the camera. Well, that group of, uh, and Dennis is the leader of the Marlins photography group, along with uh, a lot of other photographers around the ballpark, were able to uh, use those photos in our game broadcast. So I'm glad that the lens is intact. Mm -hmm. Cozart has his first major league hit. And here is Yelich now. now in the back, they see Dennis in the blue shirt. He's bailing. But hanging on to the camera. Yelich hit a ball that went off Latos' glove and ended up with Schumacher out at second. And a fastball from Latos misses. Only one player in the National League had more hits in July. And Christian Yelich, Denard Span, the Nationals. Marlins just saw Span, and the Nationals come through here. I thought it was interesting. The other player tied with uh, Christian was Ben Revere, the center fielder with the Phillies. They each had 33, and Span had 35. And the irony is that they were teammates in Minnesota, Span and Revere. There's Yelich's July. Count 2 and 0. Oh. And it's 3 and 0. Oh. You know, the one thing about Latos, he's been pretty cons consistent. We talked about his time on the DL this year, though, but last year, 14 wins. 
two years ago 14 wins and a pair of surgeries in the offseason a right elbow in October left knee in February and he injured that knee early in spring training Yelich takes the walk we check in with Craig Minervini Craig thank you very much Rich it wasn't a funny moment at all last night in fact it was a, a very involved moment for Mike Revin on that play as he came running out arguing got his fourth ejection of the year a lot of fans today on Twitter were happy to see his passion Mike even said look I didn't even know I was that emotional but it was one of those plays and everybody understood and of course he complimented the umpire and crew here which did not make the decision but the ball club noticed it too and today as things are in baseball, they had a little laugh with it. This was on the board in the Marlins clubhouse today. Do it for the boiler tonight, not the Gipper. Do it for the boiler in the ball game tonight. Mr. Loria also had a little message for the team in the uh, on the uh, video board here today, and uh, that was uh, basically go out and don't play the victim, be the warrior for the ball club. One other note on this last night, I was talking to Jeff Mathis today. Who, by the way, said I talked to all last night. It was very nice about it. I don't want to talk about it anymore. I said, well, did you sleep well? He said, well, I got home and my apartment was flooded from upstairs. The water came all down. They had to get things out of the way, spend the night in the hotel. Oh, oh, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was one of those nights. First and second, nobody out. Valdez being up. You got Cozart out at second base. Yelich at first. Valdez being fouled his first pitch off. Drops this one, third base side foul. And quickly the count is 0 and 2. Well, that's the thing, Rich, about a situation like last night. You, you either let it beat you down or you make the most of it. And hopefully the Marlins really band together and make the most of it. Well, the guy, I mean, the guy that came up with the idea for do it for the boiler has the best abs on the team, and that's Giancarlo <laughs> Stan. And he was the. Uh, Guy behind getting not only that photo, but that up on the little message board, which greets every Marlin when they walk in the clubhouse. O2. Swing and a miss, ball in the dirt, and Valdez speed strikes out. Big out for Latos. Cozart still at second, Yelich still at first. We've seen Valdez speed since he's been here. A few times uh, dropped down really nice bunts. He, he didn't get the job done there and then he chased a, a bad slider and Latos got a big strikeout. Stanton popped out back in the first. Came out of his shoes on a fastball. They throw behind Yelich, who gets in with Frazier playing on the other side of the diamond, dashing in behind him. I think it's interesting so far tonight and Leto certainly can change his game game plan but so far tonight Stanton has seen a lot of fastballs from Latos. Now remember in the eighth inning last night Stanton up with a couple of men on base he saw a lot of fastballs from Jonathan Broxton. A breaking ball into the dirt, and it's two and one. Palmetto 57 to Volkswagen leaderboard, all time home run list. Stanton right on Mike Lowell's tail, and certainly has the chance to pass right by Dan Ugla if he has a productive second half. Ugla, by the way, was designated for assignment today by the San Francisco Giants. Stanton right back to Latos, turns, fires out there, and a nice acrobatic turn by Schumacher, who cuts across 
and gets the double play. Three innings and no runs. You can tweet your photo, and if you hashtag it FL Fan Photo, you have a chance to be shown in an upcoming telecast. You may even appear in this telecast. It's brought to you by AT&T. It's our AT&T Fan Photo. Come on, put the blue ribbon panel to work. Marlins Park. Marlins and Reds. Last night's game obviously painful for the fish. In a lot of ways, it was a, a big swing in terms of, of numbers. With a win, the Marlins had a chance to even their record at 500 at 54 and 54. As a result, it was the Reds that emerged at 54 and 54, and the Fish are two under, 53 and 55. The Washington and Atlanta lost. Still, would have been a chance to gain valuable ground on everybody. Including in the wild card race. Here's Billy Hamilton now. And Jared Cozart's going to have to get out of that hitter mode and get back into his pitching mode. As the Marlins try to turn the page, they're doing it with a guy who was not a Marlin until 4 o'clock Eastern yesterday. And that's Jared Cozart. The Marlins saw him, faced him, beat him in Houston. He went five and two thirds. Giancarlo Stan had a three run double and gave up five runs on seven hits. And remember, just file it away. He spent last half inning on the bases. He hasn't had to pitch that way this year in the American League. Actually, looked pretty good on the bases. Yeah, he did. Hamilton into center field. Right away, Cozart will be tested as to how he can hold runners. Hamilton, one of the premier base stealers in the game. Swipe number 42 last night. One thing about Billy Hamilton, he has been caught 16 times. That's a lot. Jay Bruce now. Jones holding the runner. But uh, Billy Hamilton, Rich, no relation to sliding Billy Hamilton. The late 1800s, early 1900s, who stole over 100 bases four different times. Jay Bruce, Reds right fielder, not with the ball club the last 
two ball games on the bereavement list. Lost his grandfather. Bruce coming off a, a big year last year. He had 43 <laughs> doubles, 30 homers, drove in 109. Won a silver slugger. He's been an all star twice. Hamilton, a running lead, and Bruce bangs it into left field for a hit. Yelich over to get it. Hamilton cruises to third. And Cincinnati is set up at the corners with nobody out. And the heart of their order coming up Frazier, Mezzarocco, and Ludwig. I think there are times you'd see a hitter take a pitch with Hamilton getting the jump he did, but Jay Bruce, pretty smart hitter. He got a pitch out over the plate, and seeing Echeverria cover the bag, he he knew if he just made contact over on the left side, he'd get a base hit. So pretty good hitting by Jay Bruce. Jared Kozar hits his first bump in the road. Middle infield back for two. And that one's going to find the outfield. Bruce on his way to third. Stanton's throw is. Not in time. He's in there. And Cincinnati has a 1 0 lead. Well, both hitters going the other way, Bruce and then Frazier, and as good a hitting as that was for Bruce, it was better base running to go first to third, just ahead of the throw from Giancarlo. Now Mezzarocco. And the big catcher takes a strike. Punxsutawney, Pennsylvania. Of course, that's where we find out if it's going to be more winter or spring. I wonder if he knows Phil. First round pick in 07, 15th overall. As you described last night, he climbed through the minors. He's a backup in the big leagues and really has blossomed this year. I mean, he hit 238 with only nine homers in 103 games last year. An all star this year with an average right around 300, 18 homers, 52 driven in, 17 doubles as well. Part of his improvement came in his conditioning every year. Condition himself much better. And over 3,000 at bats in the minor leagues. One one coming. So we had a trend for the Reds. Since the 18th of July, three runs are less in 12 of 13 games. Just over two runs a game. Yeah, not too often have they put together three consecutive hits as they've done here. Because since the All Star break, their team batting average coming into the game tonight, 191. And runners in scoring position 145 since the All Star break. Brian Price noted yesterday if they can just get a little more offense, then things would look much brighter. This is a team that is the best defensive team in the National League. They have a very good ERA both out of their rotation and out of their bullpen. Ozark 
strikes out Mezzarocco. Like a straight change. Might have been one of the few change-ups that he's thrown to this point. So giving up three hits in a row, Salta Lamacchia said, hey, we may have to change the game plan a little bit. Good change-up to get Mezzarocco. Now Ludwig, 35-year-old veteran. Been in a lot of places. Played for a lot of teams, an all-star. Originally drafted by Oakland out of UNLV. Yeah, he was with uh, Schumacher in St. Louis. They were teammates. A Ranger, an Indian, a Cardinal, a Padre, a Pirate, and a Red. A little trouble in this inning with the curveball. For Kozar watching him in this inning compared to the first three. And also locating that fastball, which he was locating very well. The trouble with the curve could be a movie. I think that outdrew million dollar arm. Ground ball, foul ball. Wow, that was uh, that was close. Ludwig upset. He watched it from the box. The Reds bench is not arguing. They they have the absolute best look, especially Brian Price down there. He's looking right up the third baseline. But it sure was close. I agree with you. Mike Winters, who was behind home plate. Steve Smith the third base coach down for a word. You know one thing about last night. I think for a lot of people who were angry and upset and rightfully so with what happened last night. I thought the umpiring crew here. Handled themselves quite well. Yeah a lot of credit goes to uh, Mike Winters and his crew. Here's the two one. Line drive, but he can't get to the bag in time. And there's an out. Because I think all the controversy last night was not an umpiring problem. And even the umpires in New York are administrating or trying to implement a rule that even Major League Baseball has uh, admitted or at least indicated is still being looked at. And, you know, they've got to interpret the language that's on the books. And it's obviously not an easy job. It took six minutes for the review. But I think they could have interpreted it the other way and wouldn't have gotten as big an argument from the Reds. How about that? Because it very easily could have been interpreted the other way. I said I turned the page. Didn't I? Sorry, that's my job. As, as, a, as the, the leader of the broadcast here, I led you down the, the path of uh, no good. Sorry. <laughs> Schumacher's up right now. Kozar can get out of this with just the one run. Feel pretty good about things. The inning open with three consecutive hits. No, you know what? It's it's worth discussing. There's a lot of issues. There are a lot of reactions that are still thick in the air here at Marlins Park and even around baseball. If you look at all the major baseball websites, watch the major highlight shows last night and even today. That play, that interpretation by the umpiring group in New York has caused an awful lot of dialogue. Here's the 1 1. High pop. Good job by Jared Kozar. Ed Chivaria makes the catch, and Kozar gives up just the one run. After three hits to open the inning.
57 Nissan and Palmetto 57 Volkswagen. Home of your money back guarantee by when the game stands tall in theaters on August 22nd by your South Florida Chevrolet dealers. The magic city of Miami. There are Reds fans down here. That youngster Tommy has a different interpretation of the rule from last hey, night. Hey, he's just having a good time. He has no idea, doesn't care. He's just out here having fun. Casey McGee, Garrett Jones, Marcelo Zuna, Matt Latos for the Reds. One of the many talented pitchers the Reds have. Their rotation running out who they run out every five days. You can see that if this Reds team just gets some offense. That's why a lot of people, Rich, in, in spring training before the season started, a lot of people had the Reds up there in the Central. They, they were not expecting the uh, injuries to Joey Votto and Brandon Phillips. You got Cueto, the Marlins saw him last night, late toast tonight. Homer Bailey, Mr. No Hitter, throws tomorrow night against Nathan Evaldi. And then Mike Leak on Sunday. Marlins miss All Star Alfredo Simon and his 2.84 ERA. It's the Battle of Ohio coming up next week for the Reds. They're in Cleveland for a pair. And then home against the Indians Wednesday and Thursday. He takes in. And it's two and one. McGee, a, a flare of a hit that glanced off the glove of a sliding Jay Bruce in shallow right field. But Casey has dropped out of the lead in, in hits, but still third in the National League, 127 hits. He walks. Second walk issued by Latos in a 1 0 Cincinnati game. Tomorrow night's a Saturday spectacular. 7 10 start. All you can eat seats, 27 bucks after the game. Head to the East Plaza for a party at the Clevelander with live music, entertainment, and more. Marlins.com is the place to go. The Reds tomorrow night. Reds on Sunday afternoon. Then Miami heads out. Into the Central, into Pittsburgh, and into Cincinnati. So the Marlins will see the Reds again next weekend. Yeah, that's what's amazing about the scheduling. Seven of the ten games the Marlins will be playing, seven of those will be against the Reds. And so Miami's going to have to figure out a way to score runs as well against this very good rotation. They saw Broxton and Chapman, though Chapman did have some leg discomfort at the end of the game last night. He did finish. Got the save. Two and oh. Jones did a good count. Latos can't find the plate. As Arako out trying to calm down his right hander. Love to see some of the you were talking about how Latos, even at 26, has has been around. It's his sixth year in the major leagues. He's the second pitcher born in 1987 to reach 800 strikeouts. Clayton Kershaw, number one. Three and one. Teams ahead of the Marlins in the East in action tonight. The Nationals tied with the Phils 1 1. Jones pops one down the line. Schumacher calling for it. He makes a catch. Latos falling behind 3 0 gets the out. 
Marlins live pregame show. South Florida hot the dealers. Homer Bailey, Nathan Evaldi, Carl Pavano also scheduled to start tomorrow with Craig Minervini. It starts the broadcast night tomorrow at 6:30. Jeff Conine will be in the booth. Is Carl right now on a, a four or five man rotation? He's working on a short days rest. And they will be broadcasting up there on flat ground. Well said. Ozuna swings and misses. Ozuna struck out against Latos in the second. One up. Mezzarocco, though, looks longingly into the Robo Cam. Lato's doing a real good job in, in moving the fastball, spotting it. He's tied up a number of the right handed hitters. Swing, I think he went. He did. And Azuna is out number two. Well, he spot that fastball in and went away with the breaking pitch. I think he did. Now salt to Lamakia. Reds infield, not a severe shift for salt to Lamakia, as much as we've seen others shift on him. One and one. Salty's average this year much better at home, as are a lot of the Marlins. That one ends up with Schumacher, and Latos ends up working around a leadoff walk. To the fifth, one nothing, Cincinnati.
fifth inning. It's a big night here tomorrow night before the ball game. It's the uh, annual Wives Tackle Box Auction. And I'm with Sarah McGee, Jenna Mathis, and Cassie Jones to talk about it. It's a great fundraiser, Sarah. And uh, we're not talking about the play from last night anymore. We're talking about the tackle box. Tell us what it's going to be fun. And you have uh, some of Casey's things are going to be in the tackle box tomorrow. Yeah, absolutely. I've got a signed bat by Casey, and there'll be a signed baseball in there as well, as long as lots of his favorite things. He likes to fish, so we're going to have lots of fishing items. We have more of his items here. Just bring them right in. Cassie, you tell me more about it. It's going to be for Camp Aaron, which is a camp for children who are grieving, un uncomplicated grief through the recent death of a loved one, and you raise some money for them, Cassie. Yes, exactly. So they have this, um, Jamie and Karen Moyer, actually a former baseball family, um, they have this camp every year. So every dollar that we raise for them this year allows more children to attend the camp. Um, like you said, those kids that are grieving over losses from close family members. So we're really, really happy to be a part of it. And also to happen, ha happy to help another baseball family in their endeavors. That is awesome. And what is in Garrett's uh, tackle box? Lots and lots of food, um, some personalized swag as well. And I think the coolest item in there is the um, 50 caliber bottle opener. Garrett's in, um, always in big support of war veterans. And um, former Navy SEALs actually have their own company called the Bottle Breacher. So it's a personalized Mammy Marlins bottle breacher. Nice play on cue there by, by Garrett on that play. What about uh, Jeff's uh, tackle box for tomorrow? Jeff's tackle box is a little bit country focused. First thing on his list was beef jerky. You know our country boy. But I had him uh, give a catcher's mask. He autographed that, some batting gloves, so a few other personal things, which are fun to get to know the players a little bit better. Hopefully they won't be waterlogged. Hopefully not. <laughs> told the story earlier. How was that coming home after that game last night and the place was waterlogged? We had uh, a tough night uh, here at the field and then came home to a flooded apartment. So uh, we took our bags at 2 a.m. to the Four Seasons, which we were happy about. That was the good news, but um, rough night in the Mathis household. Right, at least the tackle box was up high, by the way. And what, what else do you have? Other food? What else is going to be in Casey's? <laughs> well, I have some, some tortilla chips. He's a big chips and salsa guy. So I got chips and salsa. And... Um, Let's see, lots, lots of fishermen gear. He likes to bass fish. So we have a rod and reel in there, um, some lures, stuff like that. So It'll be fun. Yeah, we're excited. Right, you're going to be out at around section, what, 16, I think it is? Yes, 16, starting at 530 when, when the game when the gates open. 530 and it runs, I think, through the seventh inning. So come on out, make your bids. It's silent auction, so you can raise as much money as possible, right? Right, and there'll also be a wives uh, tackle box. So all of our favorite things will go into a box that maybe a man can buy for a lucky lady. Okay. You're all covered, guys. How about that? Thanks a lot, ladies, and it should be fun tomorrow night. We'll check in with them tomorrow night, see how it's going. Back to you. Craig, Camp Aaron is uh, one of the great charities um, that you can do work for, having uh, worked for that charity before, the 3-1. Line in the left field. Yelich is there, and a shoot top grab. Between a lunge and a dive, Yelich reached down and made the catch and robbed Zach Cozart of a hit. The one thing about playing the outfield here at Marlins Park, you know there's so much room behind you. If you make the decision to lean out, he actually caught it before he made the dive. But if you make that decision, boy, you got to be right because if the ball gets by you, there's a whole lot of room in back of you. So great effort. Good job, good catch by Christian Yelich. Right back to Jared Cozart. Tosses to first. Jared Cozart in his Miami debut has gone five innings, giving up one run, but it's down one nothing.
tonight. Score reversed from last night when the Marlins had a one nothing lead through seven. Tomorrow's tell brought to you by Checkers. Homer Bailey, Nathan Evaldi. Bailey 8 and 5, 4.03 ERA. Evaldi's ERA sits in the low fours as well. And for Evaldi, his 23rd start. Now the Marlins obviously had a, an awful night last night. News didn't get much better today. Henderson Alvarez retroactively placed on the disabled list. Shoulder inflammation. National League All-Star. Marlins hope that the shoulder calms down and he's ready to go in two weeks. I don't think it has. You remember his last start in that first inning when the coaching staff and the training staff they went out to talk to him. They were a little unsure of his uh, velocity, number one, but also his command. He settled down, though, and threw the ball very well. But, uh, yeah, hopefully for Henderson Alvarez, the all-star, that uh, just a little soreness, and he'll be back uh, when he's eligible to be back. Matt Latos and a Danny Echeverria meet here in the bottom of the fifth. Jared Kozart and Christian Yelich also do up 8-9-1 for Miami. Latos, a guy that Certainly has pitched a lot against the Marlins. Hasn't had great success against them. And Javaria laces one in the gap right center. Hamilton cuts it off. And that sets up nicely with Kozark coming up. A leadoff hit for Echeverria. Well, we saw Jared Kozark get his first major league hit. Now we'll see if he can uh, drop down a successful bunt. Not easy to do. Cozart's hit was a chopper that went way over the mound. And by the time Zach Cozart corralled it through to first, Jared Cozart was well past first. Bunts it, first base side. Nicely uh, done. Thing of beauty. You know, the, the last three innings, the Marlins have gotten the leadoff man on. So a good job there to get that leadoff man into scoring position. And Jared Gosart made that look easy. Good form, good technique, perfect placement. Well, we noted that he looked good running the bases. And by say that, I mean he had good speed. And then when he was at second base, he was actually taking a primary and then a secondary lead. Like a seasoned base runner. Miami trying to tie it up now. You've got Yelich with Echeverria in scoring position. Lightos with a slow rolling breaking ball for a strike. Marlins have out hit the Reds. Chaburia single their fourth hit of the night. Cincinnati has three hits. Yelich hits it to left. Hits it pretty well. Ludwig going back. Reaches and makes the catch. On the track. Christian Yelich got into it. But there are two outs. Boy, we've seen Yelich drive some balls into left center all year. And drive them out of the reach of center fielders for a minute. You thought this ball was going to get over the head. Ryan Ludwig, but to Ludwig's credit, pretty good jump. He's one of those rare baseball players, everyday players that throws left handed but hits right handed. That is rare. The Marlins, of course, had a, a pretty good one for a while in Cody Ross. Mm -hmm. Now, Valdespin. Valdez being singled in the first, struck out in the third. Reds will have to make a decision with Matt Latos. He signed a two year contract last year for 2013 and 2014. They locked Homer Bailey up to a long-term deal. Yes, they did. 
Bailey six years 105 million. We talked last night about our oldest Chapman. And then Johnny Cueto Cueto. In the last year of his contract. One one. Now this being in the right field base hit. Asher Maria round third. Up with the ball Bruce. And the throw is cut. The flip gets by. Now this being the second. Miami has tied the game. And the Reds, the best defensive team in the National League, throw it around. Yeah, the Reds came into this game, fewest errors in the league, just 51. Second base hit for Valdez being right in that same error area. The throw is cut off, and it's cut off by a guy who hasn't played a whole lot of first base, and that's Todd Frazier. Frazier's the one who's charged with the error. Frazier flips it by, tries to be a little sneaky with that flip. He gets charged with the air, and that allows Valdespin to get into scoring position. Jeff Pico, the pitching coach of the Reds, on his way out to talk to Latos. Just thinking uh, with Craig talking to the uh, Marlins' wives with the uh, tackle box uh, auction tomorrow. Matt Latos may be interested in the. Uh, which one was it, uh, Mathis or McGee that had the fishing gear? I believe that was Mathis. Yeah, because uh, talking to Latos uh, the other day, yesterday, and he said after his uh, start tonight, he planned on a nice little fishing trip tomorrow afternoon, tomorrow morning and afternoon with some buddies. Well, for the third time, he faces John Carlos Stanton. Valdez being in scoring position. Miami has tied the game at one. Now, Latos has gone right after Stanton. He popped him out in the first. Got him to bounce into a double play in the third. Yeah, it'll be interesting in this situation to see if he does the same. Cold hard fact brought to you by Coors Light. Only two Marlins with three 25 homer seasons before turning 25. Miggy and Giancarlo. Breaking ball away. Stanton does not turn 25 until after the season in November. I think you can see he's pitching Stanton Stant differently in this situation compared to his first two ABs. And the Reds will just make it official here with ball four out wide. Stan arrives at first, but he comes to the plate. And get the juices flowing a little bit for Casey. And the Marlins would like that. McGee had such a great first three and a half months of the season. The end of July was somewhat of a struggle. He singled in the first. He walked in the fourth here. A double in three trips last night. With runners in scoring position, the average has come down, but he's still the best in the National League. Up here with two outs. Two and zero. Oh. 
Well, you think about it, it just shows you the tremendous respect they have for John Carlos Stanton. Because Latos got Stanton to pop up, he got him to hit into a double play, but once he got into this situation with a runner in scoring position, he got nothing. Let's see what McGee gets, 2-0. It's a fastball that's out. And Litos with a count three and oh. Well he missed on his first three to stand then intentionally walked him. He's missed on his first three to McGee. Strike it three and one. Swing. He just popped it a little bit too soon. Casey knew he'd get that fastball from Latos. He was ready for it. A little bit too quick. Full count. Two outs. Valdez being from second. Stanton from first. They'll be on the move. Missed. Latos thought he had it. He flares it at the home plate umpire Andy Fletcher. Bags are loaded. He may have a little bit of a beef. It looks like a pretty good breaking ball. We'll see where it is. Top part of the strike zone. Now Latos has to deal with the left handed hitting Garrett Jones. Barnes get a bit of a break on a ball at the letters. And Jones climbs in on an 0 for 2 night. Bags loaded. Miami has had opportunities against Latos. In this ball game, they do have a run in this inning on the Valdez being RBI single, but a chance to take the lead. Well, with all that went down last night, bases loaded. Marlins in in search of that big hit. Chopper to first. Frazier picks it up. Flips. Lato safe. Safe at first. Lato's will argue. Runner comes home. Time was not out. Stan scores. Jones is going to second. The throw there, and he's out. Or was time called? Mike Redman is coming out. And let's see if they send Stanton back. Now a couple things are going to happen here. Brian Price is probably going to challenge or look at the play at first. Nobody on the right side of the diamond called timeout unless time came from another side of the diamond. Now the first base umpire is uh, conversing with the the ups at home plate. Not sure if if Latos caught the bag. He's He's showing the ball. He's not calling for time. Here's Stanton running. But looking at that replay hut, watching Leto's foot, it's really close to the bag and it might be on the bag. And so Jones may be out at first. This is this is the same view that we saw. And we'll try to get another view to see if the foot was on the bag or off the bag. 
It's on the bag. He's out. I think it's pretty plain from that view. This is at a little bit of an angle. And so the Marlins, it, it looks like, are going to have to be satisfied with just the one run here. You can see the, the foot at an angle when he stepped on the edge. They had to unravel that play after it happened. And you can even see the bag jiggle a little bit when Leto's foot went down on it. So uh, our friends in New York are watching this right now. He plainly beat him to the bag and he's out. So the call is overturned. The Reds keep their challenge and the Marlins leave them loaded. 1-1 one, one after five. Coach talking about things on that play. Marlins get a run. It's a 1 1 game. America's new sports network plays a term for every slam, every goal, every game. America's pregame only on Fox Sports 1. Streaming live on Fox Sports Go. Tune into America's pregame weeknight, 6 Eastern, only on Fox Sports 1. Find Fox Sports 1 on your cable satellite provider. Go to foxsports1.com. Well, it was a wild way to finish the bottom of the fifth. Billy Hamilton up. A little tapper up the line. There's Billy Hatcher, World Series hero for that uh, Lou Pinella led Reds World Championship team. Eric Davis, Barry Larkin. They were heavy underdogs in the World Series and swept Oakland. Had a big World Series. He also had that uh, huge extra inning home run in the uh, National League Championship Series in '86 against the Mets. That was one of the, and I think still is, one of the most underrated postseason series in baseball history because it happened opposite the wild happenings between the Angels and the Red Sox. Those late inning heroics out in Anaheim when the Red Sox came from back, way back, to win that game and then go on to the World Series. Of course, the Mets came from behind to beat the Astros and went on and won the World Series. Came from behind to beat, beat the Red Sox. Yeah. yeah.
Jared Cozart after striking out Billy Hamilton. Takes aim at Jay Bruce. Cincinnati got a run in the fourth. Three straight hits to open the fourth inning. Hamilton, Bruce, and Frazier. And it looked like a big inning was brewing because Cozart was staring down at Mezzarocco Ludwig Schumacher with two runners on and nobody out. And he pitched out of trouble. He's pitched well tonight. And that has to feel good for a guy that just joined a ball club coming off of a bitter loss last night. And just his first walk of the game. You know, remember when the Reds got those three hits in a row in the fourth inning? We speculated they probably hadn't done that a whole lot since the All Star break because they've struggled offensively. It's only the second time since the All Star break that the Reds have put together three consecutive hits. Frazier off of Cozart. McGee picks it up. And everybody's safe. That had 1 6 3 written all over it. Instead, Cincinnati's got runners first and second. Actually, yeah, it did deflect over to Casey, but he just didn't have enough time to get Frazier. Actually, it would have been 1 4 3 watching that replay. As Valdez speed was over to cover. Infield hit, and there's Mezzarocco. Cozart has thrown 74 pitches. Chris Hatcher up in the pen. Reds and Marlins 1 1. The night after Cincinnati took game one. This is a four game series. Reds 3 1 winners last night in the middle of the controversy. Gozart falls behind. And it's 2 and 1. That pitch uh, borderline. Caught the bat of Mezzarocco. That's a tough one for a catcher to hang on to. Foul tip on a swing doesn't uh, have as much misdirection. The day after the uh, trading deadline, you look around at some of the lineups Seattle and Baltimore, 1 1 in the sixth. Austin Jackson's leading off playing center field for Seattle. Krista Norfia is in right field. So Seattle added, added a couple of outfielders and they're right in there. Stephen Drew 
who was with the Red Sox in the lineup for the Yankees who are playing the Red Sox drew playing second base. And for Boston Alan Craig is in left field. He's one for two with a double. But a good friend David Ross catch. It's a good player. The Mets are at home against the Giants. And the Giants are off to a good start in that ball game, a 5 nothing lead in New York. And yeah, the Giants trying to to right the ship while they've been struggling. The Dodgers have reeled off six in a row. And the Giants are just eight games over 500. Dodger lead three and a half games in the West. And the Mets, I know this adds a little salt to Marlin fans, especially after last night. The Mets are at 52 and 56. Marlins had put some pretty good distance between themselves and the Mets at least for a few days. Full count one out. Runners were on the move. That one's fouled off. The Mets four under. Marlins two under. So the Marlins still, if you're going to look at it that way, you also have to go back to the glass half full at one nine or twelve. In that Houston Toronto game. Speaking of uh, Jared Cozart, Jake Marisnik is getting the start and he's in center field. Hitting seventh for the Astros. Fastball in. And Cozart finds himself in a tight spot here. Brian Ludwig, who had a big hit last night, coming up. And Mike Redman has seen enough. Out to get the young 24 year old with the bags loaded and one out here in the sixth. Marlins pen pretty fresh right now. Kendall Toyota called to the bullpen. Goes five and a third, and he leaves with the bags loaded and one out in the sixth. And Chris Hatcher arrives. Hatcher 
0 and 1. You see the ERA at 3 1 3. He's been very good of late as he continues to refine this uh, this thing called pitching, a converted catcher. ERA of two and a half over his last 21 games, just two walks and 26 strikeouts in those 21 games. Well, what we've seen him refine is the uh, command of the fastball, the much more consistent secondary pitches. Ludwig steps in, infield looking for a ground ball, and Hatcher with a breaking ball misses out. Ludwig hit a screaming liner at McGee, and that came with two runners on in the fourth. McGee nearly turned it into a double play with the runner at third. He had the runner just beat him back to the bag. 1 0. Big swing by Ludwig. Hatcher, by far, Rich, uh, in, in the month of July. Was uh, just tremendous. 12 outings. He appeared in 12 games. Had an ERA at 2.19. A red at every base. Bruce Frazier, Mezzarocco. Corners are in, even at the bags, McGee and Jones. So Tlamachia holds the foul tip. And that's a, a, a different. Chris Hatcher then say a year ago Hutt, he comes in bags loaded tight spot two of the first three pitches he throws good, great, good sliders yeah, yeah last year it would have been okay here here's the fastball I'm gonna throw it real hard but uh, much more refined Ludwig pulls it foul. One and two. Another breaking ball, and Ludwig fights it off. The Reds find themselves five and a half back in the central. Milwaukee on top, Cardinals two back, Pirates two and a half back. Marlins will spend a lot of time in the central over the next couple of weeks. Figuratively and literally, literally, Miami's headed. To Pittsburgh and Cincinnati. When they get back, the Reds are here in Miami. One, two. Ludwig muscles it left field. It's going to nestle in for a hit. Two runs will score. Ludwig around first, and he's going to cruise into second without a throw. And a jam shot turns into a two run double. Well, back to back nights. Eric Ludwig has gotten, or Ryan Ludwig has gotten some big base hits. He got the big hit in the eighth inning after that play last night. A good pitch by Hatcher. He just runs the fastball in, ties him up, jams him, but he's a strong guy. And he got enough of it. A big hit to drive in, too. And so the Reds have a 3 1 lead. Now the infield comes in. The center and deep enough to score the run. As Arako tags, Ozuna makes the catch. And Cincinnati has a three run inning and a 4 1 lead. So the Reds break that string of games that they'd scored just three or fewer runs, putting up a, a four spot.
Chris Negron and Jared Kozart watching from the dugout. The runs that have come across Bruce Frazier Mesoraco all belong to him. Hatcher made a good pitch to Ludwig. Schumacher with a sack fly. And Cincinnati has four runs on just five hits. Stanton towards the line. And he can't get it. A long foul ball, it's one and one. Fastball in on the hands. Hatcher has it, flips the first in time. Inning over, but damage done. Three runs for the Red Legs. It's Christian Yelich bobblehead day. First 12,000 fans get a Christian Yelich bobblehead as well. Spark at the Park, presented by the Humane Society of Broward County. As well, the kids can run the bases after the game in the Diamond Dash. Marlins.com for details. On a night where the Marlins had hoped to turn a page from that uh, bitter loss last night, Ryan Ludwig, who heard him last night, with a two run single with a two run jam shot double and he's driven in four of Cincinnati's seven runs in this series Matt Latos now sitting pretty with a 4 1 lead first time all year for Ludwig he's had back to back games of uh, two RBIs in each game and the five hits that the Marlins have gotten have been kind of spaced apart all singles. Ozuna takes a strike. Jared Saltalamakia, Danny Echevria will follow. Lots of stuff happening in baseball in the last 48 hours. The trading deadline, big pieces moving to uh, big places. Today, a lot of injury news. The Giants uh, losing Matt Kane. He'll have surgery to remove bone chips and spurs from his elbow. Likely done for the season. We talked about Cliff Lee's injury. 
strained left elbow. That sounds like it's uh, going to keep him out all year. He had a uh, a flexor pronator strain. Hamilton is there and he makes the catch. So it sounds like Cliff Lee would have his season shortened. He's going to have additional MRIs on the elbow when he gets back to Philly after the weekend series in Washington. Anderson Alvarez, in case you missed it, on the disabled list. With inflammation in his right shoulder. Jared Kozart getting the start tonight. So the entertainer is going to have to cancel a couple of dates. One bit of news that affects, could affect the Marlins in, in late September, Matt Harvey. On a mound today, beginning a throwing program that the Mets say will take him to the end of the Major League season in September. Harvey has bigger ideas. We'd like to get back by late September. You can place a deposit on 2015 Marlin season tickets. To start enjoying Marlin games this year for free. Order now and receive a bonus of 50%. Of your total deposit amount towards 2014 single game tickets. 1877 Marlins or go to Marlins.com. Got a feeling the Mets may win out of uh, that discussion with Matt Harvey. It's a fine line as Kike Hernandez finds himself on deck. Echeverry up with two outs. And he calls one over to first. Frazier is there on the bag. Latos a one, two, three, six. Reds up four one. Fan photo. Hashtag your photo. FL fan photo. And there you go. That would be John. With some cool hats in the background. This would be Cozart, as in Zach Cozart. And he fouls it. Chris Hatcher, fastball back. Jared Cozart, the starter. For Miami. 
as we pointed out no relation to the red shortstop. Jones heads into the seats the final line for Jared Cozart five and a third. Four runs and he's charged all of them earned. Got four hits. Walked a couple, struck out three. That's one of those lines you look at. And, uh, unfortunately, those runs came in when Chris Hatcher was on the mound, even though he made a great pitch to Ludwig. Echeverria got his feet around quickly and throws out Kozar. Latos comes up. Here are the seven. Latos sitting at 87 pitches. Kozart through 82. That Mets game is already in the bottom of the ninth in New York. Brian Vogelsong is still in there for San Francisco. 5 1 Giants. Phillies Nationals in Washington in the ninth inning. Phillies have a 2 1 lead. Marlon Bird, his 21st home run, gave him the lead in the sixth. And he's still with the Phillies. Marlon Bird's name was bounced around, associated with six or seven different teams. Heard Ruben Amaro Jr. today lamenting the fact that in a lot of the deals that were discussed, the Phillies did not feel that there was equal talent coming back to them. That's one of the reasons they didn't pull the trigger. And as we talked about last night, they have some guys with some really heavy contracts. And you would think if they want to move them, especially in a deal where they eat money, they'd be able to do it after the deadline. In the right field, Latos has himself a hit. And you can hear the uh, contingent from Coconut Creek here. <laughs> Boy, he came into that at bat. Olfer is uh, last 17. So Latos picks up his first hit of the season. Atlanta tonight is in San Diego. That game about an hour away from starting. Mike Miner for the Braves. Eric Stoltz for San Diego. Phillies getting a, a terrific game from Roberto Hernandez. Hamilton takes in. Hamilton, one of the more interesting players, I think, in baseball this year. A guy that uh, everybody has heard about and read about over the last couple of seasons with all the stolen bases. Reds have him in center field. I would say right now, Rich, the. Uh, the uh, favorite at this point for National League Rookie of the Year. You know, his on base percentage is uh, just over 300 as leadoff hitter. That's one of the things you look at. But that Hamilton's on base percentage, say he gets on at a 330 clip, that's probably is, has as much value as a guy that gets on at, say, a 350 or a 360 because of all the stolen bases. And all the havoc he can cause lines it into center field. That's a hit. Latos will stop. And if you're going to give up a hit to Billy Hamilton, you'd like to have Matt Latos on in front of him. And that's the situation here in the seventh. Yeah, as far as base hits, run scored. 
Billy Hamilton uh, fourth amongst rookies in batting. So his name pops up in all the rookie categories. Offensively. Now Bruce. Strike from Hatcher. Jones gets the out at first. And so here's Todd Frazier. Four runs for Matt Latos, four runs for Brian Price. Feels like uh, six, seven, eight runs to most other managers and starters, the way the Reds have been scoring over the last 12 days. Hatcher's breaking ball is a strike. Frazier can crack it, crack it open even further with a hit here. Game Clayton Kershaw pitch last night. I mean, he he's on his way to another Cy Young award through his fifth complete game, his tenth consecutive win. Beat the Braves two to one. Two to Frazier. Down the line and foul. Similar swing from Frazier last night set that play in motion in the eighth. That's kind of his emergency swing. Second inning of relief. One two coming. Frazier knocks it back to the screen. Brandon Phillips due back near the end of August. Votto's quad strain. Reds are hopeful that he makes it back this year. And the pitching holds up, and it looks like it, it has at least to, to this point. Reds uh, ERA nice starters and relievers. Strike three outside corner. Frazier doesn't like it. He parks at Andy Fletcher. Hatcher gets the strikeout. 4 1 Cincinnati.
In case you've been under a rock, this was last night. One out, one nothing game in the eighth. That should have been a double play. Jeff Mathis getting the throw up the line, tagging out. Zach Cozart, six minutes in review from New York. Mike Redmond, obviously incensed. Redmond afterwards said that he didn't blame the umpires. Major League Baseball, after the game, said that they would do a complete review, and they did, and they issued this statement today. We realize that people may reasonably have different opinions regarding the application of Rule 713 in a particular instance. Because it's a judgment call, we're continuously evaluating the application of the new rule. We anticipate a full review with all the appropriate parties in the offseason to determine whether any changes should be made. Be sure to give me a call, Rich, uh, when they make those changes. It actually sounds like something a politician would write. Now, the Marlins weren't happy last night, and they weren't real happy today when Major League Baseball also issued their finding. And that is, they felt, in their words, that Jeff Mathis was blocking the plate. The replay official judged the catcher did not provide a lane to the runner and hindered his path to the plate without possession of the ball. And this is the part that a lot of people have a lot of problems with. The throw also did not force the catcher into the runner's yes, pathway. Yes, it did. As a result, in accordance with Rule 713, ruling on the field was overturned. And Hutt, I know you had issue with that. The Marlins uh, front office, clubhouse, manager all had issues with the fact that if he doesn't move to his left, he doesn't catch the ball. And Jeff Conine on Marlins Live had a, a real nice narrative and description as Kike Hernandez makes his Miami debut. And Conine's point is, and Mathis's point as well, Mathis made this point after the ball game that to field a short hop throw, Stanton threw it on a hop. He had to position himself so that it wasn't a, a real short hop. So he's not picking it off the ground with his catcher's glove. And the throw obviously brought him up the line. He had to do what he's been taught and learned to do ever since he's been catching and and taught by one of the best when he was playing for the Angels Mike Sosha. Here's Christian Yelich. Let's check in with Craig Minervini. Well these plays at the plate have been uh, quite uh, if you look at the numbers uh, very active in terms of the replay amount and the percentage of there may 48 plays guys that have been looked at at the plate on the home plate collision rule but it's been somewhat rare as you see yellow to the liner that uh, to have it overturned there have been 48 plays overall in the home plate collision replay rule now, this is where the umpire can only view it. no challenges here and eight have been overturned a little over 16 percent the Reds and Marlins in a high percentage of them are over 20 percent 10 of the 48 and four of the eight in the Reds Marlins situations have been overturned and the Reds have gotten now three in their favor including one of them that was a force play at the plate. Baseball came out a couple of days later, and instead of the reasoning that you just saw there, Joe Torre said they actually made a mistake, and they eventually changed the rule. That was right around late June on the force play. They do not take 7.13, that rule, into account any longer on the force play because of that one. Guys, my question is, although baseball said they will address it in the offseason, you still have to wonder, is this rule going to be in place in October? That's a good question. Balls popped up. Mezzarocco. And I have one when we come back, too, because I, I got two more pages to turn. Well, we got time. This will be fun in a 4 1 game.
at Goldstream Park. Well, Cincinnati was able to jump on the scoreboard first. That was after three consecutive hits. The final one by Todd Frazier driving in their first run. Violins were able to come back and tie it in the fifth inning. Jordani found the speed. Hooks one into right field. His second base hit of the night. Echeverria coming in to score. Reds open it up though in the sixth. Big base hit. Terrific pitch by Hatcher. Jam. Ludwig, but he was able to drop it into left field, pick up two runs, and then sacrifice fly off the bat of Skip Schumacher brought in their third. So it's a 4-1 lead for Cincinnati as we go to the top of the eighth inning. And A.J. Ramos comes in to work out of the bullpen. This was a Jared Cozart start, five and a third. He left in that six. That Ludwig jam shot double against Chris Hatcher pushed across two of his runs, and then Schumacher sack fly sealed Cozart's line at four runs in five and a third. Ramos gets the eighth inning with Mezzarocco, Ludwig, and Schumacher. We were in discussion about uh, the aftermath of last night. Yeah, I have a question. I'll throw it out there for you or for anybody else. What's going to prevent <laughs> third base coaches from not just sending everybody? Send them to the plate. Because there's so much controversy at home plate when a throw is coming to the catcher. Especially when you have a runner clearly out by eight to ten feet. What's the catcher going to do? Well there's a lot of things that. Are in and around the game because of this rule. Obviously any time a rule is changed managers job is to find the strategy around it to exploit it and to have it benefit their team. And a lot of managers have talked about once this started and once they've had a few plays at the plate about going out and asking for a review on just about every play at the plate to see if they do get a, uh, a block at the plate. Obviously you would go out when your guy is out. Brian Price did the right thing by going out last night. It was a crucial run. It was a crucial moment. Now remember it's not a challenge. It's an umpire courtesy and in most cases this year the umpires have gone ahead and let New York decide it. Mike Winters and Mike Redman spoke of this after the game. Mike Winters made the call decisively so obviously he made a statement that he felt it was not blocking the plate and he did so as well to Redman. I have an interesting scenario. What about when this crew with Mike Winters happens to be in the command center and there's a play similar to the one last night. Mike Winters can say firsthand what he saw and what he thought at that time. And that's What's he going to do when he's in the command center. And I think that brings up another issue in that this rule as it's interpreted and reinterpreted and reincarnated seems to be a moving target for a lot of umpires managers base runners catchers there doesn't there's so much gray area and we heard this in spring training and it's it's August 1st and you're still hearing it from catchers from runners they're not sure what the rule actually is how much distance does there have to be between the runner and the catcher? That's why I think it has to just go back to the way it used to be and the way Brian Price, the Reds manager, said when he said, I think tonight's play is indicative why we should probably go back to normal. How many catcher collisions over the, the last 10, 15 years? Uh, Jeff Mathis said he can't remember a catcher getting seriously injured while he was in a game. We all remember Buster Posey, but that's a that just happens once in a while. And the, and the odd thing about all of this, it's against a team that had Pete Rose. <laughs> now, I think the book is finally over. Is, have you turned it? I think so. Yeah. I'm not done. I mean, there's. I mean, there's still a lot of confusion I think on the field and as we saw with the umpires last night an umpire standing right on top of it certainly disagreed with the the guys watching it on review 
in New York. Two balls, two strikes. Jonathan Broxton in the pen. Ramos in the air and out of play. Let's go down to Craig Minervini. Craig? Well, Rich, remember the play last night where Casey McGee was thrown out at the plate, and uh, Mike Redmond said after what he saw later in the game, he may have to review how he approaches any play at the plate when his team is going for the run. It's one of those where it's going to be uh, the interpretation up to, uh, you know, in, in New York, right? I mean, uh, so I mean, we just play the play the game, and, and, and if you get a play at the plate, then, then, you know, we'll have to go out there and try to get them to look at it, every single one of them, right? I mean, that's because you don't know. And if you could tell it's sort of against what he'd like to do because McGee was out. Everybody agreed, but after seeing what happened in the uh, eighth inning, I would expect Redmond to be going out almost on every play that there's some kind of question, and that, there's something wrong about that too. Well, yeah, and I remember early on in the in the uh, replay uh, system, hearing an interview with Joe Matt of the uh, Tampa Bay Rays saying he may just have his runners on a bang bang play at first base with a couple of runners on, just keep running. <laughs> Because well, like, you don't know what the call's going to be. Just just keep them running. Then all of a sudden you get away from the yeah. real game of baseball. Brian Ludwig into left field. And Yelich is over there and makes the catch. I think the key word that in Redmond's uh, soundbite there was interpretation. And it's a rule that is interpreted. And we last night and today saw... A couple of other plays at the plate that looked similar and felt similar to last night. In fact, this crew had a play a few days earlier involving Melky Cabrera at the plate, and they called him out at the plate with the catcher seemingly in the line. And Cabrera seemingly trying to get around him and complaining that he didn't have a lane. That was also put up for a review, but it was upheld in New York. And so you look for a, a, a reference point, and maybe that's what the play last night will be moving forward. Here's the play that we're talking about. This is the same crew. This is just a couple days ago. There's the catcher who's blocking the play. Doesn't have the ball. So actually he was more in violation than Jeff Mathis without a doubt because he didn't have the ball and he was in front of the plate and the runners right on top of him. And so they upheld the out call. Yes. <laughs> they upheld the out call. That's why anything that involves interpretation you're going to have trouble with. It's got to be cut and dry black and white. If you have interpretation everybody everybody's going to see it differently. It's the bottom line. And a strike. It's three and two. You keep opening up the book. For him. Well, it's a four-one game that's that's kind of fizzled here. So I wanted to spice things up. Plus, we had your blood pressure down to a, a reasonable level in the third inning. It was doing well. I called my internist. Everything was okay. The ball sitting at the plate on a swing and a miss in strike three. Hustling down to first, Skip Schumacher. It's always kind of frustrating for a catcher when you don't know where the ball is. They hit Salty's foot. He thought it may have gone back to the screen and it stayed right at the plate. So it's a strikeout and a wild pitch. Here is Christopher Negron, who's at third base tonight for the Reds. And you got to know that there's 28 other teams 
that have watched that play, studied that play, managers have discussed it with the and and there's 60 catchers around baseball that probably watch that play and are rethinking their routine. You know, one of the real questions that and in talking to Mike Redman today in his office that he still has, and I'm sure a lot of other managers, catchers have, is how much room, how much distance, when does it start with a base runner coming towards the plate and a catcher? Is it when he's 10 feet away, 15 feet away? Is it when he rounds third? It's up for interpretation. Exactly. <laughs> and that's the hard thing. It's hard to play the game on, with all that. To be interpreted. Swing and a miss. And down goes Negron. Marlins have work to do, trailing the Reds 4 1. Bad iPhone, iPad, Android, BlackBerry 10, Windows Phone 8, whatever you're packing. It's a great app. Score, stats, highlights, live audio, Tommy Hutton's bio, and the new Tommy Hutton blood pressure app. And just to cheer everybody up, little camera 12 out there. Looks like a good night of the Clevelander. No, no misinterpretation out there. Hope not. <laughs> well, you know, the Marlins saw this in last night's ball game, and that is the combination of Broxton and Chapman. Stanton launches, and it's gone. Almost the same spot. As the ball he hit yesterday off of Quinto. John Carlos Stanton is 26. National League leading 26. Stanton now has homered in three consecutive games. And remember we talked about this earlier in the game. It was Broxton he faced last night in the eighth inning. Who gave him a pretty good diet of fastballs. Broxton tried it again. Stanton had him all timed up. And a rocket shot. Now McGee. Two walks and a single for McGee tonight. So it's a 4 2 ball game. Manny Parra and the Reds bullpen. You wonder about Aroldis Chapman. And his health. We saw him 
last night favoring that right leg holding the, the back of his leg stretching he was able to get through the save there are some changes Ramon Santiago is at third base Negron moves across the diamond to second Schumacher out and left so the only player out of the game is Ludwig so Santiago goes in Ludwig's spot. 109 miles an hour off the bat for John Carlos Stanton. To one from Broxton. McKee drives it left center field. The ballpark holds it. Look out, Hamilton. And Schumacher almost collide. Broxton has it out here in the eighth. Garrett Jones, Marcelo Zuna behind him. Reds bullpen this year, an ERA of 3.72. Yeah, where they've had any difficulties, it's been more middle bullpen, but Broxton and Chapman certainly done done the job at the back end. Sam LeCure, one of their uh, dependable middle guys. Chapman was triple digits all night last night. And Broxton did a little closing when Chapman was out at the start of the year. Dan Jennings in Miami's pen. Don't know if Dan Jennings actually got on a flight to head to New Orleans, but was recalled when Henderson Alvarez had to be placed on the disabled list. John Carlos Stan homering here in the eighth. Miami down two. Two and two. That Mets game came in under the under the wire at two hours and six minutes. Wow. That was Ryan Vogel's song beating the Mets in New York. Jones right back to the mound. And here comes Ozuna with two outs and nobody on. And the Phillies. And Washington that a 2 1 game in the top of the ninth. Now a final. And so the Phillies close it out and they win in Washington 2 1. Hernandez over Fister. Zuna. Broxton airmails one. Braves getting ready to start in San Diego. Miami here. Down 4 2. Ozuna, a pair of strikeouts and a fly ball out. Matt Latos pitched quite well and is in line for the win. Seven innings, a run, five hits, five strikeouts, four walks. 
Ozuna misses two breaking balls badly. Broxton's ERA is a slender 1.16. I don't know that those two words have been used in the same sentence. Broxton and slender. I got where you were going on that one. I figure we could use a little levity on this the day after. Yeah, we need to, a little bit. Breaking ball again, and that finishes off Ozuna. Stanton gets one of the runs back. A line drive homer, 26th of the season. Still two runs shy of the fish. He's hot. Stanton homering tonight. Now with 26 on the season. Marlins live. Brought to you by Checkers. Craig Bittervini, Jeff Cohenine, who did Yeoman's work last night. Jared Cozart makes his debut, his Marlins debut, and the kid from Coconut Creek pitched very, very well. In fact, he's pitched well in this ballpark as uh, Matt Latos. Yeah, it was. Uh, up at pro player where he had some difficulties. How about John Carlo? Three games in a row now has homered. And he's on a little bit of a roll. Those three days he's not taking regular batting practice on the field. He's taking his cuts working on things in the batting cage. So he got a feeling he'll probably do that tomorrow too. Oh I, I got a feeling he may do that for a long time. <laughs> if, if he keeps homering every day. Why change? Jennings in. He'll get the bottom of the order. Cozart. Red shortstop. Broxton spot is due up next. And then you got top of the order and Hamilton. Strike to Cozart. Bounced out a couple times and lined out. Chris Heisey. Like he'll get the pinch hit call. The key. Gets to it, gets the out. Well, we have the answer on Aroldis Chapman. He appears to be fine because he's warming up now. He was something to watch last night. And it's it's one thing to watch. Uh, I can remember Evaldi mostly last year. Every now and then touching 100. But when it's hot, it's 100 every time I, it's out of his hand. It, it's really something to he, watch. He touches it easy. With an easy fluid delivery.
Heisey made a big play in the game last night, diving catch in right. Robbed a Danny Echeverria of an extra base hit, robbed the Marlins of a run. Center field, as he hits it well. Ozuna going back, looking up, and it's off the wall. Ozuna picks it with the bare hand, and Heisey who just hit a 400 and 20 foot double. And can't believe it didn't go out. In Cincinnati, that's up at the riverboat, right? Yeah, they got the riverboat and the restaurant in straightaway center that's field. That's over the batter's it's eye. It's over the restaurant, the batter's eye. It's on the riverboat. That's breaking stuff. <laughs> that's why Heisey's smiling. <laughs> Now Hamilton, who has two hits, has struck out twice. Better hurry. Nice play by Echeverria. Oh, and he did. Who swept it quickly from his glove and got it on its way to first in time to get uh, one of the fastest, if not the fastest, guy in baseball. Boy, this was smooth and beautiful. Pick, transfer, fire from the hip and a strike. Boy, that's beautiful. Now Jay Bruce. The big hit for the Reds in this one. Was the jam shot double by Ryan Ludwig. Strong enough to get his hands through on a pitch. In on the handle he dumped it. Down the left field line. That one gets away from Salt Lamakia and a run's going to score. And a 4 2 game becomes 5 2. Ruled it a pass ball. Either way, it's a ball that Salty has to keep in front of him. The five runs the Reds have scored tonight, Rich, the most that they have scored on the road. Since June 28th, he scored seven in San Francisco. Gets a piece of the 2 2 breaking ball. That would be a strike at the knees. Jennings finishes off Bruce. Marlins down three. Let's see if Chapman's coming in.
himself in the tough spot of trying to come back against the Reds and a roll this Chapman. Now Chapman last night finished the game. It was a 3-1 game last night, but he barely finished the game. After this pitch, see Chapman walking gingerly. Chapman would go on to grab the back of that right leg. His catcher would come out. Reds trainer, manager Brian Price, find out if their all star closer was okay. Chapman did a lot of time or spent a lot of time stretching after that. But he arrives here, he's got a little more comfortable cushion. Well, he would throw a pitch and strike out Marcelo Zuna. Chapman has recorded at least one strikeout in each of his last 48 appearances. And that's quite a streak. I mean, for a reliever to have a streak like that. It's the longest streak in Major League history by a reliever. Well, we were talking about his velocity last night. He threw 16 pitches. 11 pitches were 100 miles an hour or more. I think that's because he mixed in a few sliders. Mixed in a few sliders. I think he took something off one of the fastballs. It was 98. Chapman gets strike one at 99. One oh one. The crowd taking notice of the radar readings on the scoreboard. I don't need the scoreboard <laughs> to, to tell myself that this is not something you normally see. Yeah, hitters don't need that either. I mean, when it explodes out of his hand like that, it's going from hand to glove faster than I've ever seen. I mean, I've never seen a guy throw 104, and he's thrown 104. Have you? No, I've not. We talked about it. He had a game where he threw five pitches, 103 or more. Talk to the Machia, swings and misses. They'll make it 47 consecutive appearances now with at least one strikeout. Chabria now. Reed Johnson's on deck. Edge gets a piece at 101. Give Chapman a lot of credit for what he went through at the end of spring training, that horrific injury and the awful surgery to re repair essentially his fractured face, in which they essentially make an incision in the scalp and peel the the face back to re repair the bones. Edge drives into the center field. Nice at bat by Echeverria. 101 mile an hour pitch, and he hit it right back into center. Couple of Cubans going at it Echeverria and Chapman.
Now Echeverria. We've talked about how he stayed with that approach as Reed Johnson steps in. Last year, Etch had 32 multi hit games. With two hits tonight, he has 29. Here's Johnson. Kristen Yelich. Getting a look at Aroldis Chapman. He's on deck. Reed Johnson takes a strike. It's one and one. Johnson pinch hitting here in the ninth. There, the turn by Negron is in time, and the Cincinnati Reds and Aroldis Chapman have captured the first two of this four-game set. No controversy tonight. The Reds three runs better, and the difference: Matt Latos, the Coconut Creek kid, was dynamite tonight. Ryan Ludwig, another two-run hit, and a 5-2 Cincinnati win.